Don't you think it's about time for a podcast for Christian entrepreneurs to share the good news of Christ through their business, testimonies, and faith? We do. And that's why we're here. This is the Millionaire Faith, the testimony of an entrepreneur. We'll talk to entrepreneurs from all over and learn from their obstacles, setbacks, and challenges. Get inspired by how they overcame. Let's do this. This is Millionaire Faith, the testimony of an entrepreneur with your host, daughter of Christ, mom, wife, and serial entrepreneur, the queen of vision. The queen of vision. Here's Dr. Sylvia Jones. Hello and welcome to the Millionaire Faith Show um, with the Queen of Vision, me, Dr. Sylvia Jones. And I am here with a very special guest today. Um, Her name is Terry Ferguson, and she is actually um, the owner of A Bowl of Soul. It is a podcast and a radio show. And I am so happy to to have her here, to hear her testimony and to get to know her a little better. So with no further ado, we have now Miss Terry Ferguson. Go ahead and introduce yourself, girl. Hi, this is Terry Ferguson. And I, yes, I have a podcast called A Bowl of Soul, a mix through soul music. And it also is a radio station on Live 365 as well. And, you know, music has always been a passion in my life because I felt, I feel like music gives me peace. It gives people peace and it puts them in a place where they don't really have to worry about what's going on outside of them. They can just focus and listen to something that soothes them within the inside. So now that I'm a podcaster, I just want to know what, what got you into podcasting and the whole sound thing? Was it something that you just loved from the beginning? Yeah, it's some, you know, music has always been an uh, uh, important piece in my life. Um, ever since I was a little kid, you know, I always imagined, you know, either having a newspaper. I used to make believe, like with a typewriter, like I was running my own little a newspaper and I would type up little things and stuff like that. And then I always had this fixation with listening to music and listening to radio oh. um, because radio, you know, is big in my family because I come from a family where they always listen to the radio, whether it was for news, whether it was for music, whether it was to get advice or something like that. And that's always been something that's in my life. I've always been banging on pots and pans because I always thought, you know, one day I would be in a band, which I am in, actually, (laughs) because I play bass guitar. Um, But music has always been that, um, you know, ever since a kid, you know, growing up in the South Bronx, um, you know, we were influenced by hip hop because, you know, hip hop came out of out of the Bronx, Hmm. New York. And, you know, I, you know, I was a tomboy. So, you know, a lot of the guys, they would bring out their DJ equipment and I learned how to mix. Okay. I learned how to mix records and stuff like that because that was fun. And then, too, you got to meet other kids, you know, that like music and every and dancing and stuff. So I got into more of the technical aspect of it, and it took off from there. All right. That is amazing. I love to hear how people <laughs> kind of get started and what they're mm-hmm. doing. Yeah. And so you're not just a podcast. You actually are an entrepreneur, so you actually own this. And yes. as I saw, you have one of your biggest accomplishments is that you were able to trademark and syndicate. So I yes. um, think that is amazing. So mm-hmm. tell us, that's one of your accomplishments, but tell us a little bit more about some, some of your other big accomplishments you've been able to do as an entrepreneur. Well, one of the things that I felt was important for me is to is to learn your craft. To me, that's an accomplishment. Mm. Um, you You know, you have to you know, be well read or well versed because I used to go, um, I graduated from audio engineering school and um, that was something in my spirit that I wanted to do. So I went to, at the time in New York, it was called Center for the Media Media Arts. And I went there to learn about the technical aspects of audio. Okay. What's involved with making records, what's involved just with the technical aspect of using a mix board, using the equipment. So what I used to do was I, you know, I used to intern at recording studios and then I got a internship at the Apollo theater. And um, that to me was a great accomplishment. And the way I discovered that internship was 
reading a magazine. Uh, it's a, a trade mag called Mix Magazine. I don't know if they still make it or they're on digital now. But I found out about the internship through Mix Magazine. And I sent my, my resume and everything, and they picked me. Mm. And I got a chance to learn how to do um, audio production and also learn how video was done. Because um, at the time, they had a the Apollo Theater has its own um, production facility that's upstairs that a lot of people don't know about. It's mm. not just a theater, it's a production facility. And they had their own mix room. And what they did was they were under contract at the time. This was in the late 90s, I think like 92, about 92, they had a contract with NBC. NBC was producing, um, they had their own videos at the time. Um, um, at midnight, they would have these videos, music videos. So they were producing that upstairs. And I also got a chance to work on the Motown. Um, at the time, I think it was Motown, uh, was it Motown 40? It was Motown 40. So I got a chance to meet some of the artists um, behind the scenes because they were celebrating, again, the legacy of Motown, which is amazing because that was Motown 40 at the time. You know, now it's Motown 60, 60 or 65 or whatever. But at the time, it was an honor to work on that. And I also got a chance to work on Quincy Jones. Um, he had this um, back on the block thing. And it was produced at the Apollo Theater at that time as well. So that to me was an accomplishment because I never in my wildest dreams thought that I would be doing that working behind the scenes, but sometimes when something is 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 birthed in your spirit, mm -hmm. you'd be surprised how it will manifest. Yes. And that's how it manifested. Oh my goodness. We are, uh, my listeners, we are <laughs> on here with a legend. Did y'all just hear what she said? Did y'all hear those words that came out her mouth? I heard Apollo. I heard Motown. I heard yeah, Lucy yeah, Jones. Yeah. So she knows what she is doing. Mm -hmm, and I thank mm -hmm. God that he has placed you on this uh, yeah. podcast today so that you can tell your testimony because it sounds yeah. like it's a good one, girl. I'm, yeah. I can't wait. Okay. Yeah. yeah thank God for it. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> so since we talked about your accomplishments, and those mm -hmm. are many, tell yeah. us a little bit about, I, we all know that as an entrepreneur, there are some challenges. Tell us a little bit about some of the challenges you faced. Well, the, the, to me, one of the challenges is that you, you have to be your own cheerleader. Mm. A lot of times you can share your dreams with people, and sometimes they'll blow you off, okay? But your dream is your dream. So whether they agree or they don't agree, it doesn't matter. Sometimes you can get discouraged. That is a challenge. Um, but you you have to be careful who you share your dreams with, okay? You have to try to surround yourself with people. They don't necessarily have to do what you do. That's, that's not the issue. But to have the support. Mm -hmm. um, because I think one of the things why sometimes we might stop being entrepreneurs is that we may feel like we don't have that support around us, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, besides the money, money is another issue, but, you know, just to have the support around you. And it's important for you to surround yourself with people that deposit positivity, you know, and, you know, I thank God, you know, the people that I had around me, like my mother, my mother's is good like that. Cause I remember there was one time I was about to quit college and I was in my mm -hmm. last year. Okay. But she said, what you going to quit for? She said, you, you know, you coming close to the end, you know, you, this is your accomplishment. Mm -hmm. So she said, push, you know, and sometimes you got to have people to tell you to push, yes. you know, and even though no matter how fabulous we think we are, we, a lot of time we have those moments where we, we feel like we don't want to push. And there's that, that, that pullback, that resistance sometimes. But when she told me, no, she said, no, you got you you accomplish a lot. She said, you got, no, you're going to the end. Uh. And she prevented me from dropping out. You know what I'm saying? And it was because of her words. She said, you worked hard for this. Uh. Keep on going. So you need to have people that can motivate you too. Um, you can self-motivate, yes. But I just think that you need that support. You need to read positive things. Listen to positive things because there is a lot of negativity around. Let's 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 be real. But mm -hmm. at the same time, we have to who we go whose report, like they say, who report you gonna believe? Come on now. Who right? report you gonna right. believe? You're right. Whose report you gonna believe? You wanna believe mm. the outsiders or you gonna believe what God tell you 
that this is, I made you, this is what you like to do. So, you know what I'm saying? You just push. You push. You know, right. Oh my goodness. That is, mm -hmm. you know what? That is, you push. Yeah. Um, and then um, it comes by, and you said something else about uh, words. Words are so important. They say faith comes by hearing. Yes, it is. Um, faith comes by hearing. So sometimes yes. we, God sends people into our life to say, you know, to to just right when you want to fall off That's that right. edge because That's... we even got close to the shore and you just want to drown. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, yeah, and, and, and that's keep real. Swimming, keep swimming because and that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants that's to right. steal, kill, and destroy. And he that's wants right. to waste your time working on something for you never to see it come that's to right. full fruition. That's so right. I am so happy that she was there to say, girl, what she yes. said? Push. push. Like you having a baby. Push. <laughs> push. push. That's yes. Right. So that's moving right into a little bit of, I'm loving this girl. I'm loving this. <laughs> this is good. This is feeling good to me. Okay. Okay. So my thing is, is that mm -hmm. what you said is uh, basically having that relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Tell us just a little bit more, a little deeper about um, how your relationship with God has helped you as an entrepreneur. It's helped you even through school, helped you through, through just all the, um, the obstacles that have come your way. Well, I know that I realized that, you know, I didn't have a relationship, you know, with God when I was, I think it was 31, 32. Mm. And then I just, I think at that time, you know, I just felt like God said, you need to make a little change, you know. Um, and what happened was that change happened when somebody put a fly under my door. And, and somebody must have knew I needed to see that flyer, you know. And when I saw that fly and I came to the church in the Bronx, um, I didn't know what to expect, to be honest with you. I, you know, you know, sometimes we'd be, you know, looking to come looking a certain way or whatever. But, you know, God is the type of person I learned in my life. You come as you are. You mm -hmm. don't come with makeup and you don't come with, you know, no, just come with you all because, you know, you're broken. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So just come on. Right. So. You know, when I came to the church, yeah, I was like 33 years old at the time, and I found a place. I just felt a sense of peace when I came to that church because mm -hmm. I knew that that was something that I needed. And I felt in my spirit there was something that was missing, you know. Um, and when I went in that church and I, you know, got involved even before I got baptized because I don't know, I just felt the love of the people. They embraced me. Um, when I came in, um, participate even before then, then I got baptized mm. and I'm going to tell you, I st I'm still with that church to this day. I'm, I'm 55 and I, you know, I didn't leave because it was the pull, you know, I just knew I needed to be there. And then the, the pastor that I had at the time was Reverend Dr. Susan Johnson Cook. And she, you know, the, the, the delivery and what she was preaching about spoke to my spirit. And I felt that I'm not doing, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? It, it's like I had to know that this is where I needed to be, but also that God's got more for you. Mm -hmm. You know, there's more for you. There's more for you to do. And and that's what it was. It, it was, I just knew at that time in my life when I was in my 30s, something was missing. Something was and missing. And it was, yeah, it was that, you know, I needed to have a relationship with Christ, you know? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about, um, there was actually a specific time in your life where mm -hmm. God showed up for you. Yeah. Um, it sounds like it was one of your darkest times. Um, yeah. almost what we call a near death experience. Yes. yes um, tell yes. us a little bit about that and how, um, God was able to keep you and, um, and to just move you forward. Well, you know what, you know what, what happened to me was I had prior to my, my incident with my blood, I had been um, diagnosed with scleroderma. Right? Oh, okay. And um, I didn't know what that was um, at the time. And I knew it was an autoimmune disease or whatever. And the way I ended up in, in the hospital, you know, they were looking at my fingers and said, what's going on? Why are your fingers not healing or, or whatever? And, you know, I was like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm walking into the territory 
that it's like, you know, I'm, I don't know nothing about this. And they didn't either. They didn't really know how to deal with it or whatever. But one of the things with scleroderma is that it affects the immune system. Mm-hmm. And and it can affect you either through your skin. It can affect your internal organs. And um, for me, what it did was it was more internal. Okay. So what ended up happening was I was in a hospital. Um, I was working in Connecticut at the time. And I noticed I was breathing heavy, you know, and I was wondering why am I breathing? So I've been commuting back and forth from the Bronx to Connecticut. Next thing you know, I had, I told my, I told my, my, um, my mother and father, I said, listen, I'm not feeling good. I really don't feel well. So I'm going to the hospital. And when I went to the hospital, they had to put me in ICU. Mm. And what happened was I had fluid in the pericardial sac of my heart. It was very large. And they were trying to figure out what's going on that you got all this fluid in your heart. Because I said, if I was to go on anymore, I probably would have passed out, who knows, or died. But they had to put me in. So that's when they discovered I had scleroderma. But as it, as it is with this type of, of, of disease, you know, it, it also can wreak havoc on your blood. Some, for some freaky reason, it did with mine. So when I was going to work, um, I had an appointment prior to going to work. And my doctor called me and, and said to me, Terry, you know what? Your platelets, you don't have no platelets. She was saying, you got only 2,000 platelets. I said, 2,000? And I'm saying to myself, I said, I should be dead on this street if I got 2,000 platelets, right? Oh. But I'm going to tell you, God will keep you because I didn't think nothing about that, right? Oh. I'm walking around with 2K platelets and I'm, I'm and I don't feel nothing, right? I don't feel like I'm f- about to fall out or anything. So I came in, she said, we waiting for you in the emergency room, you know? So I had to go in, they had to keep me in the emergency and um, then they had to transfer me upstairs. They had to put me in ICU. And I went from one floor to the other because they still couldn't figure it out. They gave me a bone marrow test. They said, you don't have no leukemia, you don't have that. And then next thing you know, I had to go into, they had to isolate me in the cancer unit mm. because this is how serious this was. And not that I had cancer, it's just that I had to be away from other people so they can focus on me. But they could, yeah. they never seen anything like that. So I'm going to tell you, when I got in there and every day, I'm going to tell you, I had about, I had about um, maybe 12 to 15 plasma transfers. I had a thing sticking out of my neck. They had to take plasma out of my body. So if I felt like it was cyrogenic because it was cold, because, you know, they're taking blood out your body, you're going to be cold. They had to do that every other day. Wow. Okay, for like three hours, taking plasma, replacing it, replacing it, because they had to jumpstart my red blood cells. And the transfusion didn't do it. So it was it was between using plasma and using um, this cancer treatment together, rituximab, that jumpstarted my red blood cells so that they can produce the way they're supposed to. Hmm. But I'm going to tell you, in that whole time, I was in grad school. And I I was determined in my spirit. And I prayed to God every day. I said, God, if this is it, then it's it. Right? But in my spirit, I didn't feel it was it. It's just that I had to get taken through that to understand who's in control. Right? Who's so, in control? Who, who has the power, right? I realized that. But I was also going to school while I was sick in that bed, studying. I talked to my teachers. You went to school? Yes, ma'am. Because I was I was in my last year of grad school, st- studying to get my MBA. And I told my teacher, I said, "Listen, I'm in the hospital, but I'm going I'm going to graduate. I'm graduating. Came this far, I'm graduating." So my teacher sent me my studies. I had my laptop, and I went to school right now, hospital bed. Because I was determined to graduate. Because that was because my backstory on on my grad grad my MBA was that 20 years ago I went to go for my masters but at that time it got stopped because the city of New York was going through some stuff and I got laid off and I lost my scholarship so I so it took 20 years mm. for me to get to that point to get my MBA but I did but you did that thing that's right you and did I could that testify to that 
And yes, God made it possible yes. for me to graduate. Once I got out of the hospital, I graduated that June. I walked. Wow. That mm -hmm. is so... People struggle <laughs> just to get a degree well. Yeah. Okay. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> to get a degree well. Yes. But for God to have kept you, first yes. of all, through your health conditions. That's right. And not just kept you that way, but also being able to keep your mind and yes. your functionality to be able to do grad school. That is yeah. an amazing yeah. um, testament of God's faith. It is. His it um, is. glory and his ability to yes, heal sir. and provide. Listen, and, and I'm going to tell you, a lot of people, they gave up on me. Mm. I know they did. But I, but I had told some people, if you're not, I said, listen, I need some praying people here. I don't need people to come around here and feel sorry for me. I said, you know, God is in control of whatever it is. But I said, I need some praying people. So don't come here crying. Don't come over here with all of that. You know, I get it. You, you feel bad for me, but I'm not feeling that way. As I said, I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to get my degree. And that's what you did. That's right. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so as our listeners, we have a lot of entrepreneurs um, who are listening, but we also have people who just are thinking about being an entrepreneur as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just from your journey, what kind of recommendations or advice would you have for a young person or maybe even an older person that is um, looking to make a career change? Well, my thing is this. If there's something that you've had that you feel like meets a need, a lot of times our, our business ideas come from something that's lacking. So if you notice you got to find a passion, you say, oh, I don't like that. I think I could do it this way. Do it. Whether you young or old, you know, learn about that area that you want to do. Find out whether that is something that you want to pursue. You want to, you know, you want to go into business to do. Find out how to start the business. You know, I, you know, I used to, I used to have a dog walking business when I was a teenager. Right. I used to walk people's dogs in, in my building and stuff. I always had some little hustle going on inside. But also, too, what I did was I did my homework. You know, I, I went to the business websites, to the government agency to find out how to start a business. Mm. You'd be surprised how many people don't know how to start a business. Make sure you get, you know, find out, OK, how do I keep my books? You know, learn about what it is that you have that passion for and find out who are your competitors. Who else is doing it out there? One thing I always tell entrepreneurs, you got an idea, copyright it. You got an idea, trademark it. Okay, protect your ideas. Sometimes you can't share your ideas with everybody because you don't know who's listening. But protect it. You worked hard to get it, to think about it, to even have a thought about it. You make sure you protect it. That is that is wise, wise advice. Um, so, yes, I just mm -hmm. I just heard, um, you know, making sure that you are starting well, making sure that you're looking into the passions that you have, ideas that you have mm -hmm. um, and then doing some research on those so that you can. I'm actually bring those to the marketplace. Yes, yes, definitely. So, my friend Terry, um, this is our. Um, I have I have loved this interview. Um, our this is our last question here. Okay. And uh -huh. that question is: How has this entrepreneurial journey transformed you, Terry, as a person? You know, it it has transformed me in a big way. Um, what I realize is that. You know, I'm not saying I don't work a job or something like that, you know, because because one thing I want to let people know is that don't ever despise beginnings. OK, you may have to work a job <laughs> to help you with the second thing, with, mm -hmm. with your main, your idea. OK, I always tell people, don't listen, you still got to pay rent. You ain't started that business yet. That money ain't coming in yet. You still need that paper. But. You know, what it has done for me is that I realized that you're providing, you're serving people. You have to know who you serve. You have to know that what you're providing is going to help someone else. What I've learned is not about the money so much as it is, is providing service to people and making them feel good. You know, the money comes later. 
but you need to understand what your motives are. And I realized for me, I got it. You know, I was excited about the music and yes, I love the music, but what I, what I realized is that when people send me emails and they said, Terry, you know what? I liked your show. Your show was good. It helped me think about a time in my life where I, it was a good time, you know, and that's, and that's important. That's very important because you're not in it for yourself. You're never in it for you. Just like what you told me what your profession is. You provide something that people need. They need, they need to be able to see. That You know what I'm saying? Seeing is a gift from God. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You know, it, it really is. And how much we take that for granted. And the fact that you can check people's eyes, that's that's a blessing. And that's why I said you, you, it's not only for you. It's for you to provide something that someone needs. And somebody needs what you got. They need it. They, you know what I'm saying? And maybe they don't know it yet, but they but they need what you have. <laughs> I love this. Um, God gave me this idea and mm-hmm. I said, okay, I'll do it, Lord. Um, yes. But I am so happy that we were able to bring this beautiful testimony to out to the world today. Um, and I am so happy that I was able to get to know you, um, the beautiful soul that you have. Thank um, you. And then I just want to say a little prayer over you. Yes. I just pray that God continues to just anoint you and to keep you and that your relationship with him just grows and expands. Yes. I pray that your business just thrives. And when, when I see you again, you say, girl, it just it just blew up. We done blew That's up. It. Because yes. that is the kind of God we serve. That's, we serve yes. an abundant God. We serve yes, a God that makes trees and mountains and clouds. That's right. Absolutely. So surely. That's right. That's right. Makes everything. <laughs> Listen, it's not a day that I don't thank him. Yes. Even in this time of COVID. Oh, my goodness. Stand for his protection. The ability yeah. to be able to eat, that to have still have my roof over my head. Yes, that's right. He is the ultimate provider. That's right, absolutely. So yes, girl, I thank you. I wish <laughs> with bless many blessings on you. Thank you. Um, I and you take it. care of yourself. I know my listeners were blessed by you today. <laughs> I'm going to connect with you on all social media because now we friends. Okay, that's it. That's what I like. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> That's All it. All right. You stay blessed and we will see you next time. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to Millionaire Faith, the testimony of an entrepreneur. It's our passion to create a space for Christian entrepreneurs so we can hear the good news of Christ through business, testimony, and faith. We hope you enjoyed the show. We know we had fun. Make sure to like, rate, and review, and we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit the website at millionairefaith.com, the Facebook group at Millionaire Faith VIP, and on Instagram and Facebook at Millionaire Faith. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>